Like what Eminem say, find some shit that motherfuckers don't know about me already or something. Y'all niggas be, that's why they say some dumb low boy shit and get me to say some fucked up at the bottom. Like, let me see you top my disrespect now. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So recently Mike Ray put in a live video that everyone's coming out with the same old things that he's already heard, the child support, things in the past, some drug stuff. So he made a challenge for us to come out with something that no one's heard about before. And I've done that. So I'm going to be reading off some documents I have from the Milwaukee Police Department. And this is in regards to him going to a bank. And this is recent too. In 2021, he went to a bank and he attempted to withdraw some money. But the bank manager denied him and later a gun was involved. We're going to get into all that. I'll put the documents in my Patreon like usual. And a uh, quick shout out to my patrons. I appreciate the support each month. Link is in the description if you want to join. Uh, when you join, it gives you access to all the documents I pull in cases like this one. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Now, this case is 2021, and it says that it's an aggravated assault case, intentionally pointing firearm at person, location type, bank, financial institution, weapon type, handgun. So it says, on May 20th, 2021, at 12.15 p.m., I was dispatched to the 829 West Historic Mitchell Street Associated Bank, which the city and county of Milwaukee for a reckless use of weapons complaint. Squad 2127, police officer Xavier Luna dispatched with me as well. Both officers were in full Milwaukee Police Department uniform with Axon body cameras, which were functional and recording during the investigation. I don't know if you know Axon video cameras, a lot of private investigators and process servers wear them. They're really good cameras. It should be noted that while the address for this location is 829 West Historic Mitchell Street, by the way, that's not Mike's address, that's the bank's address, so I'm safe in saying that. It's a business's address, but uh, the main entrance is located at the rear of the property. The customers may park their vehicles in the parking lot behind the building off 9th Street and enter via doors at the rear of the location. The doors on Historic Mitchell Street are used to access the ATM only and customers are directed to enter the rear of the business main entrance. Upon arrival, I was met by the caller Ricardo Ayala, white male, who is the branch manager at this location. Mr. Ayala reacted to me that a known customer, Michael Ray, black male 7692, entered the bank through the main entrance and approached the window. Mr. Ray was greeted by Marisol Cervantes, white male, who was the teller on duty at window five. Mr. Ray requested to make a large cash withdrawal in the amount of $7,300. Mr. Ray was informed by Ms. Cervantes that due to the large amount she would need to involve her manager, this is when Mr. Ayala became involved in the incident. Mr. Ayala stated that Mr. Ray's account and the check that Mr. Ray was attempting to draw against was too new to support such a large withdrawal. Okay, so what I'm guessing here happened is that Mike brought in a check to deposit and he wanted to withdraw against that, that his account was too new or the check was too new or something, but for fraud reasons, they were unable to do it. Now, Mr. Ayala stated at this time, Mr. Ray became angry and argued with him about the transaction. When Mr. Ayala wouldn't budge on the withdrawal, Mr. Ray began to cuss him out and made the statement that this is chess, not checkers. Mr. Ayala stated that in an attempt to calm down the situation, he offered to accommodate Mr. Ray by offering $1,500 of the requested cash withdrawal. But when they couldn't accommodate the requested bills, Mr. Ray wanted to become a rate again. So wait, let me get this straight. They were giving him the money. He, Mike Ray had calmed down, but they didn't give it to him in the way he wanted, the bills that he wanted, so he became angry again. I mean, come on. Mr. Ayala stated at this time he informed Mr. Ray that due to his behavior, they would be closing his account immediately. At this time, Mr. Ray stepped back from the window, took out his phone, and made a call while still in the lobby of the bank. Mr. Ayala said that at this time he escorted the teller, Marisol Cervantes, out to her car as it was her lunch break. When Mr. Ayala returned to the lobby, he stated that he did not see Mr. Ray anymore and was not sure where he went. Mr. Ayala stated that he was walking back to his office and looking out the windows, which are located along the West Historic Mitchell Street, when he noticed Mr. Ray driving slowly east on Historic Mitchell in what he described as a green Chevy Camaro. Mr. Ayala stated that this time he locked eyes with Mr. Ray and that Mr. Ray was pointing a large, dark handgun at him. I asked Mr. Ayala if he was sure if it was a gun or not. Mr. Ray just pointing at him and he stated that he is sure it was a gun. So all this bullshit, all this stuff that Mike Ray is doing over the fact that 
he couldn't get his funds immediately. He couldn't get his funds immediately, and when they did offer him money, it wasn't in the exact denomination he wanted, so he drives by like this. Mr. Ayala stated that he then informed their security of the occurrence, called the police, and locked down the bank. Mr. Ayala further provided me with Mr. Ray's information, including his date of birth and address, from his account information. I then interviewed Marisol Cervantes regarding her recollection of the events. Ms. Cervantes' story was consistent with Mr. Ayala's recollection. However, Ms. Cervantes stated that while she was walking out to her vehicle for lunch, she did see Mr. Ray leave the bank by the main doors. She stated that Mr. Ray exited by the main doors, walked west to 9th Street and north on 9th Street to Historic Mitchell, where she could no longer see him. Ms. Cervantes did not witness any events involving the alleged pointing of a gun. I also interviewed Danny McIntosh, who was the security officer on duty at the time of the incident. Mr. McIntosh stated that he did hear the arguments involving Mr. Ayala and Mr. Ray, but only stood by and observed the situation. Mr. McIntosh stated that he did have some dialogue with Mr. Ray, but it only amounted to small talk. Mr. McIntosh did not witness the alleged pointing and naming. While I was conducting these interviews, Officer Luna was able to review available camera footage and will file a supplemental report regarding his findings. I also reviewed the footage of the suspect entering the bank to obtain description of Mr. Ray. Mr. Ray was wearing a white and black baseball style hat, a white t-shirt, and a black logo on the breast pocket. He was also wearing dark pants. Police officer Luna and I attempted to locate Mr. Ray at the address listed on the account, which was matched to an address listed with the Department of Transportation. Upon arrival at this address, we knocked on the door and was greeted by a black female who refused to identify herself. However, she did inform us that this location is a rooming house and she was not familiar with anyone named Michael Ray at this location. Police officer Luna and I then drove to the second district station to file this report. Now they go on to mention the surveillance cameras and Michael Ray and get his description and the vehicle and such. And then it goes on to talk about the DA's office and how they sent the case to the ADA and the case will be prepped and turned over to the clerical staff to be scanned in for a charging review. But that is absolutely insane. So Mike Ray goes into the bank. He goes to deposit a check and get money off of that check. They're unwilling to work with him. They try to work with him a little bit, but not to his satisfaction. And when they do work with him, he wants bills in a certain way, whatever denomination he wanted. They're unwilling to do that. He gets pissed off again and is like, this is chess, not checkers. So they close his account and supposedly he drives by slowly pointing his gun at them as a threat. I don't know if that happened or not, but with his behavior and everything he's done and the things he's done in the past and the things he's done recently on YouTube, threatening to kill like Lawsuit Jerry and stuff, flashing his guns and all that. I mean, flash your guns, but don't threaten to kill somebody when you flash your guns. Um, and all the stuff that he's doing, uh, I wouldn't put it past him. I mean, it seems like a slow burn from early on to 2021 to now. So here's to Mike Ray hoping that he doesn't actually kill somebody soon and he starts to put out positivity on YouTube. All right, guys, if you like the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you on the next one.